Howdy folks, Todd here with Great Escape Farms. I am doing a softwood cutting test on pawpaw trees. So this is my four month update and actually the wrap up for this season. If you'll notice, I have four different pots here. This is the latter part of November and I had about 70 to 80% quasi success. So I had zero root out but I did have 70 to 80% that still have green in the cam in and still appear to be alive. You notice I still have some on here with leaves on after four months. So I am switching over to hardwood cutting mode and I actually took the softwood cuttings and they're out of the mist system. They are in their resting place for the winter and this should be enough to protect the stuff that's uh, the uh, branch part that's under the ground and uh, keep it going. So I will give another update in the spring slash summer, see if any of these leaf out or if they completely die. I don't know what's going to happen with them. I'm actually surprised that I had so many that still had green cam in at this point, And I only lost 20 to 30% depending on the test as far as uh, the overall stick so far the overall cutting so if you are interested in my methodology and how i perform the test and the individual updates that i did about every two weeks go ahead and watch the rest of the video if all you're worried about is knowing if i could get rooted cutting from pawpaw i did not so you can tune out now and just check out my video for next summer and see what happens with these guys then Today I am giving you an update on experiments I'm doing with pawpaws trying to do rooted cutting. So what most people do is when they find a good variety that they like, they do grafting. And grafting has some downsides to it. For one, the graft might not take. For two, if you miss some suckers, all the energy could go to the sucker and you could end up killing the graft. And grafts only last for 25 years, whereas these plants will last for years and years and years if the suckers can spread. So the, what I am doing here is a KSU and a whole bunch of other folks have done rooted cutting experiments. What I'm doing, I'm just trying different methods. I looked a little bit at what they were doing and I'm just trying some different stuff here. So I'll show you my setup in just a minute. But what I'm doing is this is first year wood right here. So I'm only taking first year wood. I'm taking it on seedling plants because I don't want to mess with my, the, grafts that I have. So I'm taking it just from the seedling plants and the seedling plants were, they are six years old. So I, I know that they are all six years old. They went in at the, in the same year. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this entire first year. I will take it back to right here where we go in and then I'll strip off three or four leaves here and I'll put it in rooting hormone. I'll show you that in a moment. And if you see at the tip of my finger right here, these are flowers that are gonna happen next year. So even where I leave the leaves, I will go ahead and I will just remove the flower bud because I do not want any energy going to flower buds. I don't even want any new leaves coming out. So part of the experiment is taking off various different levels of tips. So I'll take one, none, one, and three of the leaves off on top. So that way it should stop the growth and hopefully just work on the roots itself. Okay, let's talk about grafting a little bit. So grafting is basically, you have a root stock, which is the bottom part growing out of the ground or out of a pot. And here is an ungrafted piece out of the rootstock. This is too small to graft onto, but larger pieces like these you can graft onto. So what you do is you cut the top off and you surgically add a specific variety of pawpaw that you want on top, which is what I did here. And I have green tape, which is giving strength and holding the graft together. And I'm not using technical terms here. I'm assuming that most people don't know grafts. So if you're an expert at grafting, sorry, I'm not gonna use technical terms here. Use green piece to hold it together. And then I use something called buddy tape and that keeps the moisture in and I tape it all the way up. And it looks kind of like this. There's nothing coming, nothing growing on it. And in a period of a week or two, I start getting shoots. Now you see this one died right here. But this one right here actually has two different buds coming off and it's doing great. And if I see anything coming from the bottom like this, I would go ahead and knock it off. And that sends the energy up to the top, up to the 
scion wood where I grafted the top piece here and send all the energy up here and get it to grow. So I have lots of grafts and scion wood up here that are growing successfully. I'm very happy with this. I did this probably four or five weeks ago and these were all suckers. I, initially I had a Susquehanna here and it was as tall as I am and I missed the suckers underneath and all the energy went to the suckers and the Susquehanna itself died. So I went ahead and I took the that original stick out because it was a, a good bit larger and I left the suckers here and now I've grafted onto the suckers. So I'll go ahead and play with them. They are all various different types. So this one is called a Kentucky Champion and actually there's the date. So 7-3. So I did that on July 3rd and this is mid-August. So that was about six weeks ago. And I have various different types here. So I had a lot of different scion wood and I wanted to preserve it and keep it alive. So hopefully this will all take. July for me is a little bit later than I like to on grafting. I like to graft earlier on in the year, say April, May time frame, as soon as I get leaves coming out. But I had the scion wood and I had the suckers here. So I went ahead and I did it. The downside is this Kentucky champion right here. Any... If all of the energy goes off to another sucker or something, then I'm gonna lose the top part right here and I'll lose my main Kentucky champion tree or whatever tree is not getting the energy. The graft itself will generally last about 25 years. So if my cuttings take, then all these suckers coming up would be one type. And if I can do that to a named variety, then all the suckers would be the named variety. To me, huge advantage in doing that. This is my hoop house here, and I do softwood propagation, primarily over here on this left side for me. I believe it will be for you on the video as well. And what I do is I take cuttings from various different plants and I stick them in sand. It's concrete sand or children's play sand you can also use that lets the water go through. And I run this sprinkler system that's running here right now. I have four of them and they missed the leaves for 10 seconds every five minutes from six in the morning until 9 p.m. at night. So I'm watering the leaves and that keeps the leaves from drying out. That allows the plant to stay alive and hopefully put out roots. So some root better than others. And I have everything in here from Nanking Cherry and Gumi and Seaberry and Honeyberry. Uh, what else do I have? These are Hardy Kiwi and we come up to pawpaw right here. So this is the way that KSU did it. So KSU had the pawpaws cuttings put in sand. So that is one of my experiments. I'm just uh, trying to duplicate what they did. I use rooting hormone, I put it in, it's in my mist system like everything else. And then I have three additional experiments this year. And each one is marked individually here. So this one is a pawpaw seedling and I did not cut the top. And there's a number on there, 407, that is a location in the yard. So I know which, exactly which tree it is. And what I mean by no cut is I did not cut the top. And then one of these, I cut the top leaf off. And another one, I cut three of the top leaves off. And I, I would guess this is the one that I did three of them because I don't see any new growth. This one has younger looking leaves on it. I probably only cut one off here. And this one it, that I didn't cut anything off the top of, it right now is showing the most yellow on the leaves there. So it's struggling a little. So in addition to misting the leaves every five minutes for 10 seconds, I also come through every time I water, which is about every third day, every time I'm watering my other, other pawpaws, which are off in another hoop house area, I come in and I water these. And these are in regular potting soil. So you can see in here, I won't say regular potting soil. These are in my mix of potting soil. I make my own potting soil here with vermiculite and peat moss and compost and everything. So I'm keeping it very, very moist down at the root zone itself, which I'm not doing over here. The sand just lets the water go right through. So that's part of the main experiment here, as well as clipping the top. And also, if you'll notice, we are in, we have a covering here. So this is a 4% shade cloth. So this particular location gets sunshine for about 80% of the day. And I can't have full sun on these leaves because you can see they are just soaking wet. 
and sun would be like holding a magnifying glass on it and it would just soak them. So uh, the shade cloth only allows 60% of the sunshine to come through and that allows the plants to have plenty of photosynthesis without burning the leaves and hopefully these are setting roots. So I will give an update at a couple of months and let you know. So right now, uh, just looking at these, I have four different experiments going. So these right here are in the sand itself and I can see a good bit of yellowing on many of the leaves. And the one that had no cut at all also has a lot of yellow leaves. And by the way, the ones over here in the sand, there was no cut on these. These had a cut of one or three leaves on top. And then I do see a little bit of yellow on a couple of leaves, but there's a lot less yellowing on these two planters right here. We are at week six for the pawpaw cutting update. You can see, that, I mean, I don't know if any of these have a chance of making it. So they are the worst off. Next up, I have a pot over here that had no cuttings off the top here. They are of the potted ones looking the worst. Next up, I took one bud off the top here that I cut, just the very, very top leader, if you will. And that one doesn't look too bad, but the absolute best is right here. And this one I took three top leaves off. So the very, the leader, it was just a little itty bitty shoot like that. And then two leaves going down. And I went back to fresh wood, this year's wood and did a cutting. And this one looks best. So. Today is November 21st and it is dig day. So we are just about at four months. And the ones in the sand bed itself have all lost their leaves. Actually they did about a month ago. The ones that were not cut also all lost their leaves probably about two weeks ago. I still have a couple leaves on the ones that had one cut and a couple leaves on just one of the branches that had the three nodes cut so off. For these, the way that I do it for all of my branches in here is I go down underneath, stick a finger under and pull it up and no roots. And no obvious roots on any of these. Okay, we are set up inside, so I noticed that I do have the bud up here on the top. And what I'm going to do is scratch along, and I'm scratching with my fingernail, and we are brown down to the wood. That means this stick is dead. Same with this one, and I'm going both below the surface here. Ooh. So this particular one has some green right at my tip, tip of my finger. Hopefully you can see that. So this one, I am going to go ahead and overwinter. So I'm gonna put this one in this pile. So I have three, six, seven that are green, three that are dead. So a 30% definite death rate. These are, still have green on them. I don't see the normal calloused over the way that I normally see it. Uh, usually uh, the way that I define that is uh, when it kind of swells up down here on the bottom and hardens off. But I will go ahead and put these in some potting soil. I will label them and we will see if they leaf out in the spring. Okay, I just made up a label here. So pawpaw test, softwood from sand. I will put that in pot here and what I will do is I will just shove these on in. I don't have to worry about roots or anything because there aren't any. So what I'm going to do with this and we're starting with the one that where we did not cut the tops and what I'm going to do is dump the whole thing upside down and try to catch it as a pot. Okay. There we go. So this way I can gracefully take it apart. Okay, no roots on any of them. And what I'm gonna do now is the same test I've done on the ones in the sand and basically give a scratch, see how many are alive and how many are definitely dead. So I'm not gonna bore you on video with that. What I'll do is I'll give you the final tally on what is alive versus what is dead. Okay, we had 18 total 
branches in. We had five that failed, 13 that made it. So that is a 72% success ratio. And what I will do is the one, when I say made it, what I mean is that there's still green cambium in it. These are brown, they are definitely dead. So these still have some life in it. Nothing is calloused over the way I'm used to it being calloused over, but I am gonna go ahead and put it in. We'll do a hardwood cutting test on it. So I will treat it like hardwood and we will winterize it, put it outside in a bed and go from there. Okay, next test to check is potted plant with just the top leaf cut off. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna tip the pot over and we'll gracefully go about looking to see if there's any root structure at all. Okay, I checked them all. We have 13 plants and we had a 100% 100% that had green cambium still. So zero roots, but we do have green cambium and all, so they will go out for the winter test as well. This is the final test. This one has three of the top leaves cut off. So let me check it. Okay, all done and potted up. So we had 12 out of 15 that still have green cambium on it and zero rooted. So that's 80% take. And here is where they will rest over the winter. I still need to water them in, but I'll go ahead and add, I didn't want to carry them after they were wet and heavy. So they will overwinter here and I will do an update in a separate video next year to see how a hybrid uh, see if anything happens in the spring, see if they do leaf out or if they just completely die over the winter. But this will protect the roots, not the roots, but the, the lower ends of the limbs that are underground. And hopefully we'll see some action next year. But